we are charging with 4.3 kilowatts and we are at 92% state of charge. Welcome back to the off grid garage here in sunny hot Australia and congratulations to, to the potential first full recharge after the winter. This could be today. It could be it. We are close. So we are currently at 3.4 volts, so it may take another one or two hours to fully charge. But at this speed here, maybe just an hour. Okay, I'll be right back. One hour later. Ooh, I almost missed it. We were almost at 55 volt already. So I turned off the solar charge controllers and started the recording for all three devices now. We have now here the Overkill Solar in the top battery shelf on the left, the JK BMS in the middle shelf and the Helltech BMS still connected to the bottom battery. Deviation is 4 millivolt in the Overkill, 4 millivolt in the JK and 11 millivolt in the Helltech BMS. But we are not charging, we are discharging actually at the moment because I've turned off the charge controllers. Okay, let's go back in the Victron charge controllers, East Roof. Enable charger. Charger enabled. Does it charge? Yeah, here it comes, here it comes. It should be like two kilowatts. Maybe not. 1.2. Okay, west roof. Battery enable charger. All right, let's go back into the Helltech. And let's observe what will happen. Ah, I wanted to show you something else. Here in the smart shunt, we are not connected to the smart shunt, so it claims we are at 99% state of charge. If we go into the history, we can see the last full charge was 93 days and 22, the 94 days ago. This is like three, three and a half months, three months and four days. Yeah, winter is over, guys. Okay, so we are now charging with around 10 amps in each battery bank. We know the Heltec BMS at the bottom doesn't show correctly, so you need to add another around 20% or so. And now the packs are actually balancing against each other. And that's where you can see the current going up and down between these battery banks. So even we are charging with constant, say, 40 or 50 amps now, the, the current going into the battery banks is not the same for all banks. So we are at 54.1.2 volts and we are charging with 3.1, 3.2 kilowatts. And we should see the deviation actually going up in the battery cells. The overkill claims we are at 87% state of charge, 89, I can't really read it. The JK BMS is already at 100% state of charge and the Heltec BMS is at 98% state of charge. I'm not sure who is correct here. But we are at 4.1 volts cell voltages at the moment and um, the internal balancer of the BMSs will kick in at 3.45. And this is also our absorption voltage when we should see all the solar charge controllers going into absorption mode. So changing over from constant current to constant voltage and we are not charging any higher than 3.45 per cell. And then we let it absorb for half an hour, for an hour, yeah for an hour. And then we fall back to 3.35 float. But let's see, after three months of not fully charging the battery, but using it every day, so micro-cycling it, how much deviation do we actually have now with the first full charge in springtime? So now we can see the deviation going up in the JK BMS, 28 millivolt, in the Heltec BMS, 25, and only 7, 8 millivolt in the overkill. That is surprising. None of the BMSs is, is balancing at the moment. They're still taking energy in. And we are at 99.6% state of charge. The middle battery with the JK BMS is actually the one with the highest deviation, 34 millivolt now across the cells. And cell number 10 is again our highest. We know cell, ah, oh, the balancer just kicked in on JK. Look at this. It is balancing. Cell number 10, discharging it with two amps, which doesn't have too much effect because we are still charging with 20 amps. 
So let's leave the system running and see if we have any battery banks turning off because of a high voltage cell or if they are still at least that much in balance that the BMS doesn't turn off. We still need to charge to 55.2 volts. So this is 300 millivolt on top of what we already have. So you can see it's 16 amps in the overkill and 21 amps in the JK. So there is obviously a bit of a difference uh, between our battery banks. But remember the time when I had turned off the overkill accidentally? I pressed the button on the app and it, it didn't discharge anymore. It was only charging. I think it was at least two or three days. So it could be well true that the overkill battery in the top shelf here is actually on a far higher state of charge than the other two batteries. And the battery in the bottom shelf with the Heltec BMS takes only 7 amps at the moment, which is actually around 9 to 10 amps. So this is even fuller than the other two batteries. That is interesting. As you can see now, you don't need a device which controls the balancing between your battery banks. They do it all automatically. The one in the middle here with the JK BMS is obviously the one with the lowest state of charge. And at the moment it takes the most energy of all battery banks. And the other two battery banks are slowing down now and waiting for the JK battery to catch up. Still 7 millivolt deviation in the top battery with the overkill solar BMS. It's impressive. We can see 44 millivolt in the JK BMS, which is not so impressive. And we can see 44, 41 millivolt in the Heltec BMS, which has started balancing as well. You can see these little flashes there. All these cells which have a flash in their symbol are actually getting discharged now. But this is only again like 150, 120 milliamps or something, so basically nothing. As long as none of the battery cells goes over spec, so over 3.65, and the BMS shuts actually the whole battery bank down, everything is good. Now we have reached 55 volts in the whole pack. And this is the argumentation some people bring forward now in regards to communication between the BMS and your system, in your solar charge controllers, for example. If you reach the 100%, it slows down your charging. But I don't see the need for that, actually. We can still charge with all the power we can get from the solar now as fast as possible, as much as possible, into these batteries. And once they reach 55.2 and we go into absorption mode, the current will taper off anyway, fully automatically, without need of any communication between the BMS and your MPPTs. Of course, if you are living in a hotter climate and your batteries are getting really hot during charging, that would be a different situation and you can then throttle charging or even disallow charging and wait for the batteries to cool down again. So we now see an increase in deviation in the Heltec battery at the bottom, 57 millivolts we have. And you can see all these flashes, it's discharging all these battery cells now at once. And there's still nothing happening here in the overkill solar. All these battery cells are so close together, we've got only a 10, 11 millivolt deviation. Oh shit. So, and we are reaching 55.2 volts. And let's see if we can capture the moment here when all the lights turning orange from blue to orange and we go into absorption mode. And from this point, we don't increase the voltage anymore. We keep the voltage at 55.2 and let the batteries take whatever energy they need. And the current will then go down naturally. You can see 55.2 on the JK BMS. So we should see this in just a second. Can we capture both? Because all the solar charge controllers are talking to each other via a Bluetooth network in the Victron system here, they have synchronized charging. So if one of them detects absorption voltage, it changes all the solar charge controllers to absorption. They act basically as one solar charge controller. Ah, 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 I just missed it. I just missed it. <laughs> just a split second ago, they changed now over to absorption mode. So we've reached the maximum voltage of our battery banks. And now the current is tapering off from this time. Look at this. And the Heltec is not even... Oh, it has started balancing here for two cells. 
Yeah, and two cells on this side here, it's balancing a bit, but it has only 14 millivolt deviation at the moment. So that is fantastic. And you can see the current is now going down and eventually all the batteries will settle down and don't take any power anymore from the solar charge controllers. And we can already see cell number 10 here in the middle shelf battery that it comes down 3.489. So this is already 10 millivolt lower than it was before. So the active balancer works again a treat here. And let's see what the Heltec BMS does with its passive balancing and also the overkill. Because these balancers are very similar. So we've got 12 millivolt deviation here. I wouldn't even bother to balance actually. And we have the passive balancer in the Heltec BMS as well and 85 millivolt deviation which is the highest of all our battery banks at the moment okay i think we leave this running here for a while and come back in half an hour i'm absorbing for an hour anyway so we've got 15 millivolt in the overkill 71 in the jk and 97 in the heltec bms see you in half an hour Okay, it is now shortly after 2 p.m. I'm back well over 45 minutes now of balancing these battery packs and let's see the result. So the overkill solar in the top had 15 millivolt deviation before and we now have 18 millivolt deviation. So <laughs> nothing has happened there. The JK had 71 millivolt and we have now 15 millivolt. So this is very well balanced now after 45 minutes. And the Heltec had 97 millivolt deviation and has now 166 millivolt deviation. Ouch. As we have tested many, many times before, the JK BMS with its active balancer actually shines. And it is the only BMS which actually works with these high capacity cells and keep them under control and in balance. Yeah, after 94 days of not fully charging any of these batteries here, it all comes together again and is safe to use. None of the cells has caused an over voltage protection and turned off one of the battery banks. Even we have a fairly high deviation in the bottom shelf battery here. It is not of a concern at the moment because none of the cells is peaking. Yeah, and I think in the next five to 10 minutes, we will actually go into float mode and reduce the voltage to 3.35 or 53.6 all in total and then we keep the battery there and the solar charge controllers are only supplying power to our load directly and maintaining the battery at this 100% state of charge but on a reduced voltage level without stressing the battery and this is the beauty of lithium iron phosphate you can fully charge them every single day to 100% state of charge and it will not degrade your battery if you keep the voltages relatively low. So I guess we will see in the next coming months when we more often fully charge this whole battery bank, this whole battery shelf here, how the deviation will look like, how the battery management systems keep the batteries under control and keep single cells from running away. I'm, I'm actually not even expecting that we fully charge the battery very often, even during summertime, because I will plug in the vehicle, I will turn on the pool pump as soon as soon as we hit the 90-95% state of charge. So I don't see the point to keep the battery in this high state of charge now for nothing basically and have the solar charge controllers turned off. i rather use the energy right now and we will eventually turn on the water heater at this point of time and waste the energy and make hot water. I have, um, I have just turned off the charging MOSFETs on the overkill solar and balancing stops straight away. So this is only doing charge balance here. Function settings. Yeah, charge balance is turned on. If we turn this off, it will obviously start balancing again. But then as soon as I turn on charging again, it will stop balancing. So we can have only either or. Okay, so these other charge controllers have now switched to float. We are reducing our voltage. I was just going to say, why, why, why are we discharging the batteries now? What has happened? And this is exactly what happened. Float mode. Okay guys, so far this first full charge after the winter time 
Everything is working perfectly. Everything is working as designed. Uh, this is a really bad angle. We've got the full reflection of these panels here now coming into the... Maybe I can, I can use this solar panel inside the garage now to catch this reflected sunlight here and make even more power. How good would that be? Get some big mirrors. I'm really glad everything worked as we have designed it months ago, years ago almost. And none of the battery banks has actually shut down with an over voltage protection situation. All the batteries are still relatively balanced. And we will keep monitoring the situation in the next couple of months, of course. I've got many, many, many tests still to come here with the system. And I can't wait to share all this information with you. It will be very interesting. Okay, guys, so far this video from today. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your great and generous support here on the channel. And until the next video, guys, stay charged, stay safe. And thanks for watching again. See you then. Bye bye. Yes, 44 kilowatt hours of energy. I should plug in the car now, right? Here, 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 before you go. We are discharging the battery with 4.5 kilowatts at the moment. Looking at the BMSs again, the overkill solar at the top here, 10 millivolt deviation while discharging with 30, mil, uh, 30 amps. Uh, the JK BMS has 27 millivolt while discharging with 33 and the Haltech has 19 millivolt. So JK is the highest again. And this is the only battery which actually has the aluminium bus bars. All the other ones have the standard tint copper ones which came with this battery cells. But this one has Paul's aluminium bus bars on it. Not sure if this is related or not, but we see the highest deviation in this battery here while charging and discharging.